Today is planting day. I have my seeds and I have a whole bunch of transplants. Um, it is a beautiful day outside, not a cloud in the sky, and today is time to plant a garden. So first things first, I have to address this greenhouse. Now normally I would not have let it become quite so um, so overwhelmed with all of these seedlings and allowed these seedlings to get quite so leggy. However, we were on vacation and actually we we're on our honeymoon um, for a couple of weeks and in the meantime these seedlings were just kind of like sitting in here. I didn't want to put them out in the garden because I did have or I did see some garden pests. I saw some um, some cutworms so I don't want to put them out here and not be able to monitor them for the few weeks that we were gone after getting married. So for right now I have all of my seedlings. I have a whole bunch of tomatoes, different varieties. Um, I have some squash here that I don't think we are going to use because I don't want to just plant out like one zucchini but we shall see I'll keep those in my back pocket um, just a few that we took out you can see these tomatoes were quite leggy I mean definitely you know it can be fixed um, but you can see I would rather have them alive and leggy and kind of like weird shaped than have them um, eaten and chewed through in the garden so um, I have those and then I have my garden map, which got a little bit wet here um, from the morning dew. Just a list of everything I'm planting in order. Um, if you've never seen this, I have an entire video on how I actually map out my entire garden companion, planting, all of that stuff. Um, I have my fertilizer, which I always use. I have some diatomaceous earth to sprinkle on top of the soil. And then I have everything that I am direct sowing, a whole bunch of beans, um, some salad greens, some parsley, things like that. Now I will say that I am growing quite a few less things this season than I have in previous seasons mostly because I have very limited space and I want to be able to get an actual harvest of one or two things that I can preserve and put in the freezer um, for later seasons as I'm sure everyone on this channel is probably already aware um, prices are going up on things like produce and chicken and just having a back stash or a backlog or whatever you want to call it of things in your freezer is such a great idea right now so on my planting map here it is definitely um, a little bit less full than in other seasons. I am planting out a whole bunch of beans, a whole bunch of tomatoes. Um, I have just harvested a whole bunch of parsley um, and I will still continue to plant out some curled parsley, which is a different variety of my flat leaf parsley, which I have like stashes and stashes of um, in the freezer. I have some hanging to dry. Um, I have herb bombs, all of that. And then I'm still planting out some um, some kale, some mustard, some arugula, things like that. I have an entire video on everything I'm planting out. If you want to watch that, I will leave that in the description below, all the varieties and everything. But with my little planting map, which I will also leave in the description on how you can make your own garden map um, to kind of just make sure everything is in the right place in the garden. But first, I'm going to go ahead and get my seedlings into the garden, followed by my direct sun seeds. Let's go. All right, you can see the garden is completely cleaned up and ready um, to be planted out. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna set this down here because I only have so many hands. First thing I'm gonna do is look at my garden planting map. Um, this is one square foot per little box here. Um, you can see kale, 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 arugula, arugula. So basically I have a legend here of everything, of everything that I'm going to be planting out. The orange ones are actually what I'm going to be planting out and then everything else is either in pots or kind of like extra seeds or whatever. So this is three by two of Roma tomato in RO right here, Roma tomatoes, and then followed by lemon cucumbers and beans and all of that. So basically I'm gonna take everything that I'm transplanting out, I'm going to lay them in place. So I'm just going to measure out a square foot on this. I know that this is six square feet, um, or actually, sorry, six linear feet by two linear feet. So then Roma tomato, Roma tomato, Roma tomato, Roma tomato, etc., all the way down the line until I have all my transplants laid out. And I will do that leaving space for my direct sown seeds. And then I'll come back and direct sow everything. all of my transplants laid out and as you can see they are quite leggy and quite long um, even our where was it the lemon cucumbers are 
actually already started they were starting to trellis themselves around the greenhouse on other plants so we can fix this not to worry um, especially for the tomatoes they definitely need to be fixed because they're not even standing up straight the way that i'm going to fix this is by removing a good portion of these leaves and burying the stem about halfway up so they can stand straight um, i'm going to need to make a pretty deep hole in order to do that um, i'm just gonna come in here and pinch off these leaves and that way roots will grow from all of this instead of just from the bottom the roots will grow out of this little these little um, hairs here i don't know if you can see that but every single one of those will turn into roots as long as they're in contact with the soil and that way these will stand nice and tall now i'm going to do that for every single one of these um, i'm going to use my blood and bone meal um, i swear by this fertilizer i absolutely love it last season i did not use it and my tomatoes um, did not produce nearly as well so i will link to this um, you can find it on amazon i have used this for several seasons now and it definitely for me at least in my opinion it <laughs> works wonders um, i also uh, coming over here to the other side of the garden i also had originally mapped out my roma tomatoes well more roma tomatoes i separate my tomatoes so that they don't like get all infested with the same kind of pest ever so i had my roma tomatoes here and as you can see this tree shades out a good portion of that bed now it doesn't do that all day long but i mean there's a lot of sun right now and this is completely being shaded out so um seeing that I just switch them over here um, these will be non trellised on here so they'll just be um i'll use a florida weave instead and i will keep my roma tomatoes there and my um some of my beans will be there which i'm not super thrilled about but also my leafy greens will be the majority of that space so that's perfect because they will do really well in the shade um, and then these i'm going to have to come in with some like poles or something afterward um, i had some in the old garden and i left them there um, when we moved but I will come in here and stake these up. I'll go and get a few of them, and then those will be good to go. All right, so first I'm gonna dig a hole that is big enough to accommodate these seedlings. Um, oh, hey puppy. Um, I am gonna be sticking them into the ground up until pretty much, oh, there you go, till pretty much like here or so. Um, so I need a hole that's big enough to accommodate all of that. It's not a big deal if some of the roots are smushed, but I'm gonna dig a pretty good size hole here much deeper than I would have otherwise um, and just kind of make sure that it has enough space and then I'm going to come in here and sprinkle just a little bit of blood and bone meal about that much or so into the hole you do not want to over fertilize with this I'm going to mix it in just a little bit here and then pinch off these top leaves so that everything up to here grows roots bring it out and you can see it already has a pretty good size root system growing in place so i'm going to loosen those up those look pretty good and then oh, we definitely need a bigger hole in here and then i'm going to mound it a little bit around the base that way it stays in place about that much and then afterward, I'll come in here and do the Florida weave and it'll be actually able to hold them up a lot better. All right, so you can see that they are all in um, on this side, my Roma tomatoes. Now for the rest of them, right, my, my lemon cucumbers over there and some of my, um, my cherry tomatoes, they are gonna have to be trellised. So I will probably start trellising them along the back side of the fence um, just to ensure that they are unstrong um, and that they're not toppling over and trellising onto like the tree or something like that. These ones look pretty good um, for right now. They are still obviously leggy, um, but when I get the Florida Weave trellising in here, which are like posts on all four corners of this, um, then they'll stand up a lot straighter. And of course, um, when I water them in, it'll perk them back up. So 
I got all of my transplants and you can see that they are starting to wilt. They definitely need to be watered in sooner rather than later. And I went ahead and laid out all of my seeds wherever they're going to be direct sown. These are beans and then I have um, more beans, I believe, yeah, a whole bunch of beans. And then I have my leafy greens here in the shade, um, as I mentioned before. And then over there, I did go ahead and transplant some basil that I had. Um, there's some purple basil that kind of blends in, and then you can see some Genovese basil. And then in between the tomatoes and in that little back corner as well, um, along that row here, I am going to go ahead and sprinkle in some parsley. Don't mind my hands, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle in some parsley in between because I find that parsley does a really good job of companion planting with tomatoes and a whole bunch of other things actually, um, and prevents a lot of pests. So I'm gonna get those in the ground right now. So for my salad greens, right, I got all my beets planted out, but for my salad greens, my mustard, my arugula, and my kale, um, these are tiny little seeds. So essentially what I'm going to do is just direct sow them right on top of the soil. Um, I'm not going to count them out or anything. They are so tiny. So um, I don't know if you can see that. These are extraordinarily small. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of sprinkle them on like this and wherever they land is pretty much where they're going to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the majority of the packet, actually maybe around half of the packet so I can save some for next season. Um, I'm going to do two by two, so four square feet of arugula, four square feet of kale, and four square feet of mustard. Um, in the past I planted out significantly more than that and we never used it and a good portion of it went to the chickens a couple days ago when I ripped everything out. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do six square feet total for salad greens. So my last two steps are diatomaceous earth and watering in the plants. However, um, if you put this down and then water it, this kind of becomes irrelevant. You have to put this down when it is um, dry, right? So I will go ahead and water it in because it is heating up quite a bit here. It's, it's really hot um, actually. And so I want the plants to get some water before they start wilting. Um, and then later on, probably tonight or in the mid afternoon, once it's a little bit drier, um, I will go ahead and sprinkle this. And essentially diatomaceous earth is something I put down. Um, it is organic, so you can use it as an organic fertilizer. Um, I garden all organically, which is great, um, but it definitely makes it harder to control all the pests. So I get a lot of cutworms in this area, a lot of aphids. Um, and in addition to companion planting, diatomaceous earth really helps to prevent um, young seedlings from getting eaten. Now, a lot of my seedlings are not young anymore because they have been in this greenhouse forever now, um, but still, I just want to make sure that nothing comes and starts taking all the leaves before everything can like settle in and get rooted. Um, so I will use my diatomaceous earth. You can find this at like any, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever garden store. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the sprinklers, make sure everything gets a nice big drink of water. All right, so that's a wrap. These sprinklers are on. The garden is completely planted, transplants, direct sun seeds. Everything is good to go. Um, time for me to go wash my hands, get all the dirt off of my body. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.